Hi, welcome back to another vlog. Um, it's good to see you back here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I have had quite a few new followers recently, so hello to all the newbies. Um, I'm just going to show you a few things that I did this week. Uh, yeah, so firstly, I had some sales of some artworks on paper on my website. I finally got around to scanning a whole bunch of smaller artworks on paper that I'd been making at home over the last couple of weeks and I listed them onto the website and announced it onto Instagram and Facebook and quite a few of them sold so I spent uh, a little bit of Tuesday just packaging them up and getting them ready to post so I don't have a super fancy packaging system especially with these works on paper i just pop them into these plastic um, protective folders with some hard cardboard as like a backing so that they don't get you bent up in the mail i always add a little bit of a personal note to everyone that purchases just saying thank you for supporting me and thank you for purchasing and i hope you enjoy your new artworks and uh yeah once they're all sort of packaged up into these plastic slips I then pop them into rigid envelopes so I prefer to use those really thick heavyweight envelopes so that again to try and reduce the risk of them being bent in the mail while posting or when you know posties sort of you know fold them up and shove them in letterboxes I don't want that to happen so I try and make the the mailers as stiff as possible so the cardboard that is in the packaging and then the cardboard of the mailer makes them quite solid so I haven't had any problems with things getting damaged this way so that's just how I've been packaging for ages I don't use a lot of things like you know tissue paper and stickers and all that sort of stuff mainly because I just I'm not good at keeping track of those sorts of routines I don't have a dedicated space to package I just package wherever I can when I can so uh yeah I kind of just keep it as simple as I possibly can the mailers like um the plastic pockets that i get i get from a place called packet in which is on ebay um they sell all different sizes um mostly standard sizes like a3s a4s a5s but then you can get um various different size plastic package bags and they usually come with these cardboard backing bits that fit into the bags as well so if you're in australia and you're looking for um some similar packaging type of cello bags then that's who i use so i highly recommend them their shipping is really great pretty sure they're based in melbourne and they send it to me really quick Once I finished packing up those orders, while I had all these bags and boards out on my table, I decided to package up some of the other works on paper that I have that haven't sold yet, so that when they do sell, I can just pick them up and stick them straight into the mailers. So these ones here are all A3 sized um, artworks on paper, and so they fit perfectly into the A3 sized folders <laughs> and uh, I took this opportunity as well to sign and write the names of the pieces on the back as well. Uh, I always sign all of my artworks on the front and the back. Um, on the front I just have my signature and then on the back I have um, my signature, the date and the name of the artwork. The next thing on my list of jobs to do on this day was to restretch some canvas over these stretcher bars. Uh, I don't restretch all my canvases or I don't stretch my own canvases. Usually I purchase them pre-stretched. But if I sell an artwork overseas, I will remove the artwork from the canvas stretcher bars. Um, and so then I'll be left with stretcher bars that have nothing on them. So instead of just throwing them in the bin and getting rid of them, I always try and restretch fresh canvas over to reuse them. These particular canvas bars, um, I actually purchased, these were 
canvases that I purchased a while ago, they had canvas on them already and it was a new brand that I was trying out and I really wasn't happy with the quality of the canvas. So I ended up not really painting. I think I painted something on this one and then I ended up just taking the canvas off. And so that's why you can still see a bit of an edge of canvas around the back. Um, instead of undoing all those staples, I just cut the canvas off and now I'm just putting the canvas on that I prefer to use, which is more heavyweight canvas. And I actually find that by leaving the a bit of a strip of the original canvas on the stretcher bars, it can help keep everything a bit better aligned and it's less likely to go out of square. But yeah, so I don't, yeah, I, I do stretch canvases occasionally, but I don't really do them that often and I'm not the greatest. So please don't judge me for my technique. I know enough how to do this to get by and to have a satisfactory result, but I am by no means an expert at canvas stretching. I learned how to do it many years ago when I was at TAFE doing a visual arts course. And so I just do my best, but the back is usually terribly messy and yeah it doesn't look that great <laughs> so don't judge me i don't do it that often but with these particular canvases i didn't like the canvas quality that was on them but the stretcher bars were perfectly fine so rather than just ditching the whole thing i took the old canvas off and decided to put some new canvas on so uh yeah and this is this is how i do my corners again you can't really see it that well but i always try and make it so that i get that flat edge on one side of the corner and I don't know if that's the right way or what this is called this technique but that's how I do it <laughs> and so yeah it's it's a good enough job <laughs> and uh yeah so in this particular case there were still a few little um bumps along at the front like a bit where the canvas hadn't quite stretched out this doesn't bother me too much and if you have a canvas that has some of these little stretch marks in them or dints in them if you wet the back of the canvas with just plain water I'm um, just using a spray bottle of water here and you let that water soak into the back of the canvas. As it dries, it will sort of restretch the canvas and it will make it taut and it will get rid of all those little bumps and discrepancies. So yeah, I did two of these. They're both the same size and I got them prepped ready to paint on. On Wednesday, I was inspired to go back out into my garden and pick out some flowers. Uh, the old bouquet that I had from my garden were all dead, so I cleaned up the vases, picked some fresh flowers and popped them into these vases and made a bit of a still life set up. And I was planning on doing some paintings from this setup, but I knew I wouldn't really have time to do them that day. So I did take quite a lot of photos to use as references later because I really like the, the ram shackled wild bouquet <laughs> that this one this has. So uh, I took quite a lot of photos. That was just a few of them, but I did take quite a lot. Of course, Bean had to come and inspect the, the flowers because, you know, he's a sticky beak. But yeah, there's um, all sorts of different things in this particular bouquet. There's like some nasturtiums, jasmine, honeysuckles. I'm not sure what that other white flower is, but they all smell absolutely divine. And yeah, I, I was quite happy with this wild it's like a very sort of wildflowerish looking bunch of flowers <laughs> so yeah so I did I was planning on painting these and so I did sit down and do some color swatching so this is a secondary color palette so if you're familiar with um, the primary colors you're thinking about your blue your reds and your yellows a secondary palette is when you work with the secondary colors so green orange and purple and so I was doing a little bit of swatching of these colors in my sketchbook and planning, you know, to use these as the colors for some paintings. And yeah, I ended up doing a few sketches in my sketchbook, including this one here. Um, this was a bit of a color test, um, which I do end up using these colors in a painting, um, which will be shown a little bit further in this video. But if you want to know a little bit more about this particular colour selection or a little bit more behind the scenes kind of information, this is a really good time to mention that I do have a Patreon account. I had a Patreon account set up a few years ago. I ended up closing it because I didn't have enough time to maintain it, but I've now opened it back up again. There are quite a few different tiers that you can choose to support me with, starting at just $3. Um, there are some print club tiers, so if you join those, you will get rewarded with an exclusive print in a couple of months time. Uh, there is a tier for people that just want to watch tutorials. There's also one for people that are a bit more 
interested in the business side of running an art business. <laughs> and so, yeah, if you want to support me and get some more behind the scenes footage of my work and some tips and tricks, I have some um, free reference photos that I put up. I have some time lapse videos that I'll be putting up, some really old tutorials that were there since the beginning. <laughs> um, there's a link in my description to my patron. So if you would like to join me, click on that link and it will take you directly to the page where you can have a look at what's going on. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, two more two sketches that I did in my sketchbook based on those colors and also the floral setup that I had. So this is my Moleskine sketchbook, the A3 Moleskine that I've been using. And uh, I was really happy with these colors. Um, I think they're really pretty combinations. And I am planning on doing some larger still lifes in these color, these sort of color, you know, um, what's the word? Color story, color palette. Uh, I just hadn't, didn't get around to it this particular day. So I am planning on doing more, but on this day, I managed to get these two paintings done in my sketchbook and that was it. <laughs> We have been having some beautiful weather in Melbourne. It is definitely spring and we have some really nice warm days. And so I've been doing some walks and this is a bushwalk that I actually haven't done before. I literally drive past it every single day and I've never taken the time to walk along here. And I'm so glad I did this day because it is so beautiful and the sun was shining and there was beautiful shadows all across the pathway. The Yarra River is like right next to it and it was so nice. So I did take a whole bunch of photos uh, to use as references and yeah it was really really pretty i think i'll be definitely going back there to take some more pictures but these are the few that i took on this day and they are so pretty So I didn't do any painting on Friday or anything of any interest on Friday. Uh, this is Saturday when I finally got to work on these canvases that I prepped earlier in the week. And I decided to use one of the reference photos that I'd taken on Thursday along that walking track to create a painting. So I'm using the palette that I had in my sketchbook and I am... So these are just, the whole painting is just with these three colours. So I've got Viridian Green, Magenta, Australian Sienna, titanium white and I think at the end I did actually add in a little bit of Prussian blue because I needed some darker darks and I couldn't get get it dark enough with the colors that I had so I did add in a little bit of Prussian but besides that the whole painting is just these three colors and white <laughs> so so yeah I'm just gonna pop some music on and you know you guys can sit and watch me paint again if you would like to see a full start to finish time lapse of this particular painting you can find that on my patreon account uh, if you join uh, up to I think it's, it is available from the um, basic account um, so the three dollar basic membership if you join you can watch the full length no, sorry, not the full length, but the, the time lapse that shows the whole process from start to finish. It goes for about three minutes. Uh, and I will be showing a lot more full length tutorials on um, Patreon as well. And a lot of the you know, watch me paint type of uh, videos. So if you are interested in seeing those things that will be exclusive to Patreon, then you should probably go and sign up so you don't miss out.
I hope you enjoyed watching a little bit of my week. Uh, this painting did end up being sold. It's uh, heading off to a new family once it's been varnished and packaged. <laughs> and there's my dog barking in the background. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this week in my life. Um, try and get some art stuff done at home and make sure that you subscribe and like this video. By liking the video, it is more likely to be shown to other people that might be interested in watching it, which really helps my channel grow. And I would really appreciate that. As I've already mentioned, if you'd like to see uh, some more behind the scenes stuff, then you can find me on Patreon now. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> pretty much any social media platform. I have a presence there. You just search for my name and you will find me. <laughs> so I hope you had a lovely week and I will see you next time.